Hello, you dirty Spellstone freaks, and welcome to the Ultimate Spellstone Tip Guide. I'm your host, Oello, and I'm going to be holding your frail little noob hand as we both take this mind-blowing journey into delicious Spellstone goodness. So, let's get started. Tip number one. All right, when you first start playing... I recommend that you focus on commons and not rares, and here's why. Later, when you get uh, some ballin' cards and you start uh, wanting to upgrade stuff, you're going to need a lot of dust. You will get all of the dust back that you invested into commons, whereas rares, you'll get a, just a fraction of it, right? So there's tons of legit commons that you can quad and start using. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not against throwing a few baller rares uh, into your deck and upgrading those, upgrading those and, uh, you know, using dust on those. But the majority of your deck should be commons so that you can use that later. Don't go upgrading a bunch of like half decent rares just because they're rares. You think they're better than commons. There's a lot of sweet commons out there. And remember, you're going to get an epic, you're going to get epic cards way sooner than you think. Your epics are going to start rolling in as soon as you start seven star and maps and stuff. So just be careful about the rare cards you use and upgrade because you're not going to get a little, a uh, lot back uh, for your investment. So, you know, upgrade commons go easy on rares and uh, that's, that's it tip number two join a full guild as soon as possible um, you're gonna get a gold bonus when winning bounties uh, being when you're in a guild um, and this bonus will increase with the member count of that guild up to 50% and that's pretty huge so uh, that said anytime you spend doing bounties while you aren't in a guild you're missing out on cash money so even if you don't plan on making it your permanent home uh, just join one right now for the gold bonus. Go do it. Join a guild. Close to, as close to full as you can get. 49 members, guess what? You're the 50th member. It's, you're going to make bank. Okay? Join a guild. Tip number three. When you're just starting out, don't vaporize epics or legendaries. Just don't vaporize them. Okay? Just, uh, well, looks like kind of crap. Now don't. Just wait. until you Don't go all willy-nilly until you get the hang of how things work. Okay? Because you might dust a card for, for, for some measly stuff so you can upgrade some, some cards. And then you find out a couple months later that, oh, well, in this deck, it's it's awesome. Or like, oh, I didn't know you had to use it this way. Or the, the devs might even buff the card into oblivion. You might regret it. So until you get a pretty good grasp on the game the hold off on you know vaporizing and when i say dust by the way i mean vaporizing for the future of you know tips in this video don't dust anything don't vaporize anything uh epic or higher until you get a good grasp on the game tip number four so after you get in a guild and get yourself all sorted out you got a sweet little starter deck you're going to be using you go through all the intro tips and stuff what you're going to want to do is one star every map in the original campaign okay the basic campaign here see the little stars there do 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 there's seven on each one those are going to be empty on your screen most likely if you're seeking this video out and what happens is when you go through and get one star on each one okay you're going to get an item called the heart of blue fire now that item is really sweet because it increases the rate at which your energy regenerates by 20 percent okay it's big it's big it's huge 20 percent okay and it gives you the ability to drop an item called blue fire souls which are used in rune crafting you can trade them in to get um, cards so that should definitely be a priority that you're working towards for your first uh, few weeks or you know however long it takes tip number five get and upgrade your heroes uh, you can find the tomb of heroes book on your card table in your little pirate ship not sure why i call it a pirate ship looks like a regular ship that guy definitely doesn't look like a pirate and that's not a parrot it looks like a crow or something inside it are heroes that you can buy and use um, they're not expensive a uh, thousand gold for the most expensive one by the way you need to increase i think it's your level uh, to unlock these uh higher tier ones um, try to get one that synergizes with your deck as much as you can. Uh, if you have to decide to upgrade your hero or a card first, uh, like if you have dust laying around, you're not sure, and your hero's not max level, if you're comfortable with that hero and think you're going to be using them for, uh, for a while, upgrade the hero. I mean, your hero is going to take a turn, every turn, every match for forever, you know what I mean, until you switch them or take them out. Whereas your cards, they're just a one-time play, one out of 15. You're not even going to draw all 15 every match. So... You know, your heroes, basically I'm trying to say that your heroes are important. Tip number six, 
Be super stingy about your shards and your dust, but not your gold. Uh, other than the small amount you need for your heroes, you don't really need to save it up for anything. Uh, basically, don't feel bad if you're constantly dropping gold on card packs. While we're talking about this, never spend shards. Just don't spend them. Like, until you know exactly what's going on with boxes and chance packs, and you get a feel for the game, and epic pulls and specials and blah, blah, blah. Just save your shards. Um, trust me. But your gold... Spend away, man. Tip number seven. Okay, this is going to make your life and anybody who you share pictures of your inventory with life easier uh, by showing how to... I'm going to show you how to group your cards. So see how I have all these cards here you like if you ever go into your inventory once you start playing for a little bit and you got like a billion cards and you have to like scroll through them you get carpal tunnel at age 19 in order to avoid that if you go to your uh, main screen and your your menu down here go to your settings and then click group inventory cards if i can get it <clears throat> there we go on the right see group inventory cards on the right then if you go back into your inventory see now all those cards are, are now are now grouped together and they just have a little red tab there see right in the middle you see my shadow of thunder uh, there's a little red tab uh, that says times three so then that's how many you have so that'll that'll save you I mean over the course of a spellstone career that might literally save you hours uh, scrolling around your screen so quality of life alrighty tip number eight link a congregate account okay uh, aside from getting a normal name instead of like player four two nine six eight four one two five three you're gonna get some shards which like we mentioned before is the most valuable currency in the game uh, if you don't have one head to congregate.com uh, and start one up it's super easy you're gonna get some shards for it and you're gonna have an actual name instead of some default alias tip number nine uh, if you plan on dropping money on the game it's probably a good idea to wait for deals and specials uh, if you want to get the most bang for your buck, um, they oftentimes have deals uh, like epic packs for 60 shards, uh, shards for less money than normal, um, like 35%, which is huge. Uh, also, make sure you get a feel for what a good pack looks like before you spend. Um, you know, you don't want to drop a bunch of cash on a box just to find out that it sucks later um after you get a better feel you're like oh man i can't believe i dropped that money uh the ideal situation would be to buy shards when there's a shard discount price deal uh and then hold on to them until there's a decent box you can unload them on tip number 10 boxes versus chance packs uh you'll notice when you click on a box in the store see this right here we got frog sword box there's a little zero out of four at the bottom see that this is because with boxes, the game keeps a running tally of which cards you've pulled, um, and it'll never give you more than four of the same card um, until you buy them all, and then they all reset to zero. So this means if you spend enough shards on a single box, you can get a quad of every card in the box, guaranteed. Chance packs, on the other hand, bull rag, bull rag chance pack. Chance packs, on the other hand, do, do not keep a tally, uh, and they're always random. So you have an equal chance to get any of the cards with every pull, um, and you can buy them infinitely. Uh, and I don't know if you caught that before, but you can technically buy the boxes infinitely too. Um, when, you, when you max out all those to four, it'll just sort of reset all of them to zero. So if you're balling, you got that you know Scrooge McDuck money, uh, you can just keep buying cards till your heart's content oops i almost forgot so occasionally when there's a box uh see down at the bottom where it says open for 60 shards that you'd click if you want to buy one of those occasionally to the left of that you're going to see uh at first it's called a scout's cash or cache you know if you're a badass and that'll allow you to get four cards for 120 okay so that's four cards for the price of two um and then if you do that it'll upgrade i can't remember what the name of the second one is but it's called something uh crazy and it's 10 it's like you know legendary cash or whatever and you get 10 for 400 shards so do the math it's a pretty sweet deal um word around the campfire is though that they do that when the box kind of sucks uh to like you know promote sales uh, of, of of shards so but be careful i mean i've seen i've seen one where it was a pretty legit box uh and and took them up on that offer so always be on the lookout for that button before you go click crazy on the middle and pay full price because there might just be a sweet sweet deal uh just over to the left so look out for that scout's cash 
tip number 11 uh, view map rewards so if you click on one of the map missions we'll click on one of these here and then you click on see that little star up at the top right boom uh sometimes it's a little treasure chest i think i don't know but you click on that little star uh and you can scroll through and see what the reward is for getting a star in that mission so uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five through seven. In case you're curious about mission rewards, it helps a lot in events. If you you see what you, you want to see, what you can get if you do whatever, just to have that knowledge. Tip number twelve: What's happening soon? Coming soon? I don't know what to call this category. Anyway, uh, one cool thing I like about Spellstone is that you don't have to check like their social media or their website or anything uh, to see what's going on uh, in the future. Uh, to check upcoming events, it's super simple. All you have to do is click on your menu on the main screen, uh, then go to upcoming events and these are notoriously super vague the <laughs> synapse there something has been caught by something and something's happened because of it like what bgs it's like it's always hilarious like you know the dragons have become somewhat good in the with the lightning and there's a turn in an event <laughs> whatever anyway you can see what events are upcoming in a suite they give uh like the times and when they are and when they start and when they end and a, you know a, a brief description so uh that's pretty cool and i mentioned that because of the next tip tip number 13 some events use your bounties so what you want to do is when you find out one of those is coming up in your upcoming events like there's a bounty based event coming soon uh start saving your bounties okay don't use them right away when that event starts make sure you have a full page full of bounties ready to use and uh, what i like to do is i like to save up these bounty items here these bounty refills just in case one of those bounty based events comes up and like it's something really sweet that i really need uh and i want to make absolutely sure that i'm going to place high enough to get it so when you know a bounty event is coming make sure you save up your bounties you know whatever it ends up being if you're maxed out what is it like 10 hours or something or five hours i mean um save up your bounties for it that was a super long-winded for like the easiest tip in this video i'm a rambler I don't know, I like to listen to my own voice, especially when I'm sick like this, because it sounds delicious. It sounds like a steaming pot of phlegmy wonder. Tip number 14. Uh, it's kind of a double one. Uh, first part, don't suicide over and over and over again, and uh, don't be committed to one single deck based on the cards you have. So if you lose a mission stage... Uh, it could have been some crappy pulls. Uh, if you lose the same one like five times in a row, it's probably better to save that valuable, valuable energy. Why did I say valuable energy? And just wait uh, until you upgrade your deck um, and then and then give it a try again. Uh, like I mentioned earlier about one starring. Uh, and in the same sense, pay attention to the deck that you're losing to over and over again. Just rubbing my armpit on screen. I'm just failing at this tip. Uh, pay attention to the deck that you're playing against, uh, and then maybe try and counter that uh, with a temporary deck, uh, you know, built specifically for that mission. But uh, at the end of the day, don't just keep doing it, doing it uh, over and over again, and, and losing, you know. Get, upgrade your stuff, try again at a later time. Tip number 15. This one has to do with Guild Wars, which you may or may not have participated in already. Uh, every once in a while, an event will pop up called a Guild War. It pits guilds against each other every few hours you face a new guild and whoever has the most points uh, at the end wins guild versus guild each person in the guild gets 10 attacks okay 10 attacks that's all you get it's not based on energy it's not based on bounties it's not based on anything other than the guild war so here's your obligation as a legit guild member spend all of your guild war attacks you have to do all your attacks man uh you have to. Even if you know you're going to lose, even if, even if you know, it's, it's your obligation as a sweet, sweet, precious guild member to spend all those attacks in every battle. I mean, oh, what do you mean I have to set my alarm and get up and do it? Eh, whatever, dude. It's five, ten minutes, okay? Yeah, you know what? If you're going to want to be in a top guild, you're going to have to do that. Set your alarm. Well, I'm supposed to be sleeping or I'm at work. Sneak off to the bathroom. Take a fake poop. Anyway, use all ten attacks, okay? And don't auto-battle, you know, yeah, oh, well, I know I'm going to beat him. Just don't do it. Something might happen. You know what I'm saying? Uh, tip number 16, the Shardbot. So the Shardbot costs $7.99 USD. 
and it gives you 10 shards every day for 30 days. That's 300 shards. I know math. Uh, so the shards alone that this item gives would normally cost like 26 bucks uh, American. So it's a sweet deal right there. Uh, you can spend these shards however you want, but most people recommend stockpiling like several months worth and then dumping them all into a decent box like we talked about earlier. Um, but wait, there's more. Uh, the shard bot also increases your maximum energy by 20 okay for that 30 days so it's going to give you 20 more energy if you're free to play but you want to toss a little cash at the game this is probably the most intelligent way to do so i don't think i can show it to you here because i already have one uh ticking down right now but uh yeah it'll, it'll probably be in your uh spell stones or treasure or shards <laughs> it'll probably be in one of the three only things on there anyway if you want to throw a little cash at the game but don't want to go crazy buy the shard bot it's an effective purchase Tip 17. Uh, another item for people with small amount of cash uh, to spend on the game is the Energy Curio. Hope I'm saying that right, right? Energy Curio. This item appears in the store for a couple bucks and it raises your energy cap by 10 permanently for good. Not 30 days uh, for good. Uh, all you have to do is you just purchase the item once. Uh, it's an awesome item if you want to get serious about Spellstone, but you also want to do things like sleep, eat, or you know, occasionally pry your face away from your phone or your iPad or whatever. Uh, you can only purchase this once, and when you do, it'll refill your energy to the max. So make sure you're out of energy when you do, when and if uh, you do buy it um, to maximize your uh, energy usage. So yeah, th those two those two things right there, the Energy Curio and the Shard Bot, if those are running, it's going to help you immensely, uh, immensely? It's going to help you immensely without uh, breaking your bank. So yeah tip number 18 keep an eye on your current xp uh when you're about to level make sure you drain your energy by doing missions uh not bounties missions basically you want to completely drain your energy when you're about to uh, ding a level because like a lot of other games your energy is going to fill up uh to the max when you level uh and you know it'll just maximize your energy usage as well uh, oh, and you do not want to do bounties when you're close to a level uh, because they give XP, but they don't use energy. So you might ding a level, but still be at max energy and unfortunately uh, waste all that slimy, time-driven, sloppy, blue goodness. In short, uh, drain your energy to zero by doing missions, not bounties, when you're about to uh, ding a level because it will refill your energy and it's significant you know what i mean tip number 19 uh, if you're bored in game uh, this is a pretty neat feature you can uh and it's a good way to like gauge your power um you can actually fight your guild members uh including yourself uh by clicking on your guild hall like i just did boom boom the sweet double doors uh and then just tapping uh one of your guild mates uh names up at the top here you'll see battle or tower battle uh so, you know, if you got a lot of time on your hands and you find yourself out of energy and all that, uh, this is a pretty sweet thing to do. Uh, I'm going to do a battle against Alien Wolf right now and see what's up. Let's just do an auto just for the... Oh, you son of a bitch. I will get redemption. <laughs> I, can, I can normally do the movie guy voice, but... In a world where I fought Alien Wolf in a tower battle, auto and got redemption tip number 20 your passive abilities on your cards will start working as soon as you play the card not after its delay it's it's cooldown timer like let's say you play a three delay card uh with vengeance five um so oof, how perfect is that uh so as soon as you drop this card into play opposing cards are going to take five damage like you know, barring the skills that they have to negate that, um, if they attack it. So keep this in mind for skills like armor, invisibility, uh, and so on. Um, so you, like cards with high delays aren't just piles of useless nonsense until their cooldown ticks. Um, and that like defensive skills can sometimes be used offensively uh, as well. So tip number twenty one. Uh, we're going to talk about the BGEs. You may have heard about these. So BGE, or Battleground Effect, it's a game changer. Like, literally. Like, it completely changed how the game is played on a rotating schedule. Uh, some people hate it, uh, but most people enjoy, uh, like, how it regularly shifts the meta uh, and forces people to adapt uh, with different strategies and ideas. So what, what is it? What is it? What's, what's the BGE? What's it all about? 
the BGE, uh, the Battleground Effect, is a buff that's applied to certain groups of cards for an extended period of time. The buff is applied globally to both player and computer decks. Uh, the effects vary, but as an example, uh, at the time of this video, we're at the tail end of the elemental battleground effect, uh, which is this one right here, uh, and it, it, what's going on is all elementals in the game do 50% more base attack damage. Um, and it's also the start of the frog BGE, which is this kind of weird one where uh, frogs have a poison bolt that shoots out that's like half of their base attack rounded up, um, and it also leaves a poison on the person that gets bolted that does damage equal to uh, half their base attack rounded up as well. There's a BGE in effect at all times, uh, and it's probably the most important factor uh, when determining what you're going to put in your deck and like how you're going to play. Um, this is because some of the BGEs apply like super crazy buffs. There was just an angel BGE, so you could have like a row of angels and it was just like blue, 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 and power all craziness. Um, the damage was nuts. Uh, so because of this, you can also sometimes use them to your advantage uh, against difficult computer decks that you couldn't beat without the an active BGE. Tip number 22. Dual Strike is OP. So you may have seen the skill Dual Strike. So not only does it give a card two attacks every however many turns, but it also completely reactivates it uh, along with its skills again. So if you've got a card with Dual Strike, Barrier, Bolt, whatever, um, every time the Dual Strike timer goes off, it'll cycle through those skills twice too. Uh, the only skill that it does not do this with is freeze. So, damn, that's a bummer. Tip number whatever. Uh, never surrender a Clash PvP event battle. Every now and then you'll get an event, it'll be called Clash. Never surrender one of those battles. Even if you know you're not gonna win, uh, do as much damage as you can. You wanna get as many stars as you can, and the more damage you do, the more stars you get. So at least try to get one, right? Because one is better than zero. So damage your opponent as much as you can. Don't surrender. Don't be a little pansy. Tip number 24, deck advice. Yes, I said deck advice. So yeah, man, there's a lot of complicated stuff going on. Tons of different factions, tons of different skills, tons of different everything. One thing you can do, especially um, things that are specific to your current situation and the cards you have available, uh, is head over to the Spellstone forums at congregate.com. Um, there's tons of people uh, that are willing to help other people. Um, lots of nice guys, lots of nice guys. You can post pictures of your deck, post pictures of your inventory, and um, I'm sure that somebody's going to have uh, some information for you and you know different goals you can work towards etc this one's going to be like the simplest of them all um if you know you can win a battle like if you're absolutely sure and it's not like a guild thing or a super important one um you can totally simulate and just skip it if you want so i'm in this battle and i'm like dude i'm just in here i, I have like four seconds i'm taking a pee right on the bottom right you see this here you see this auto play button and it turns blue Oh, you can't because my stupid, dumb face is in the way. Well, in the bottom right hand of your screen, there's a little circular arrow, right? And when you click that, it starts auto-playing. Then another little arrow pops up on the right hand of the side of the screen. See it? See it? See it right there? Click that. Boom. And it'll just sim the battle for you. This way you can pop through like a bunch of battles really, really quickly if time's an issue. So sim the battles if they're super easy and if no one's going to get totally pissed off tip number 26 so uh, occasionally you're going to come across events that utilize towers right um in, in pvp see that on the top left of the screen those towers uh similar to like the guild thing we talked about earlier um I think it's meant to give the defending team an advantage, uh, but there's some neat things that you can do to like turn it into your advantage. Uh, something I like to do is drop like high delay cards because you know they're not gonna they're gonna make it uh, through the through the storm because that tower doesn't really attack for anything. Um, I like dropping cards with berserk. Here's an example of two, like a high delay and a berserk card. I like dropping berserk because it every time it attacks, it's power grows right so by the time that tower's gone that thing's gonna have like a crazy amount of damage uh, that it, uh, it'll it'll be able to bring to the table. Um, uh, there's some other things you can do there, like stick like bolt all cards. They can just sort of hide under the tower while still doing damage to the map, or any other thing that like buffs your cards. You know, um, anything that you want to survive and do stuff or get buffed. 
basically. So use that tower. It's there. It's it's beautiful. Tip number 27. And I think the actual real final tip. So if you're free to play, or, or even if you aren't, um, when you're first starting, save legit rares that have the invisibility skill. All right? The invisibility skill is, is a very valuable skill in the game. Um, you're going to need this later when you go for your mythic card. Volcanos is a badass, and he shoots lightning bolts at your face. And the invisibility skill uh, helps you to uh, avoid that. So if you have, an, especially these frog scouts, right? So these frog scouts are legit. You want to keep those. Um, don't vaporize things with invisibility if you are free to play uh, because you're going to need them later, all right? And if you start doing it early, by the time you're actually going to fight Volcanos, Volcanos, whatever you want to call them, you're going to have a sweet little army of frogs that are invisible that'll do your bidding, and it's going to be amazing. But that's it, man. That's all I got for you for now. Um, thanks for watching. I probably missed a bunch of crucial stuff, and everybody hates me, but... But I think we covered a lot of bases. Uh, I hope I answered some questions, you know. Uh, if anyone has anything to say about this video, uh, the tips, me, organic apples, whatever, uh, feel free to comment below. Any and everything is always welcome. If you enjoyed it, rem the video, remember to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah. Look forward to more Spellstone videos. I just got an EVP. I just got another EVP on my thing. I hope you guys heard that. I'm going to leave it in. I got like 30 of those while I was recording this. Anywho, uh, thanks for watching. Peace.